the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. Makers of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Car New, and Johnson's Self Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. these days, but common sense tells us not to accept them as truth nor help spread them, especially when they concern the war. But there are other kinds of rumors about individual companies that often need to be corrected. You may have been told, for instance, that you can't get Johnson's Wax or Johnson's Glow Coat because the company isn't making these products anymore. Well, it is a fact that the makers of Johnson's Wax have been turning out millions of packages of protective finishes for war uses, and they're proud to be doing so. But without interfering with that important job, they're also able to make good quantities of the products you know so well, such as Glow Coat, Cream Wax, Car New, and Johnson's Paste and Liquid Wax. Every dealer gets his share of these products, though not always all that he asks for. He tries to keep you and his other customers supplied with Johnson's Wax polishes of all kinds, because it's so important these days to keep your floors, furniture, woodwork, and leather goods wax protected. You can make your wax supply last longer by using it sparingly. Remember, a little goes a long way. There's a little stranger coming to 79 Wistful Vista. But don't send any silver rattles because he's probably six feet tall with his welding mittens on. Yes, the McGees are about to take in a war worker. And here, cleaning out the spare bedroom and talking on the phone, respectively, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. No, we haven't met him yet, Mrs. Toops. But Dr. Gamble vouches for him, and the two best judges of human nature are doctors and bird dogs. What, Mrs. Toops? <laughs> oh, no, thank you. I know your dog is very intelligent, but we'll just take Dr. Gamble's word for it. Yes. Well, I've got to go help McGee straighten out the spare room, Mrs. Toops. He's, uh... Hey, Molly! Hey, Molly! See you later, Mrs. Toops. Goodbye. Hey, Molly! What's the matter, McGee? Ain't it marvelous? Ain't it wonderful? Oh, boy. Hold down the blackout curtains. Go buy a steak. Tear up the ration books. Woohoo! What's the matter with you, McGee? Stop leaping around. Hey, Molly, look. It's happened. It's happened. What's happened? Look. Look at the paper. Look at the paper. Germany surrendered. Oh, throw that 1918 paper away and stop bombing. <laughs> oh, 1918. Why, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought this Stutz Bearcat advertisement looked kind of funny. <laughs> Did you get all the junk cleared out of the bedroom? Yeah, but a lot of it wasn't junk. A lot of it was valuable stuff, I want to say. What'd you do with the moose head? I did just what she says. I put it in Uncle Dennis's room. But I didn't know what to do with my doorknob collection. <laughs> Oh, you used to collect the weirdest things, McGee. Doorknobs, oyster forks, and hubcaps. Yeah. I knew a guy once, Fred Nittany from Stark Rock, Illinois. <laughs> he used to collect hairpins and compacts. Hairpins and compacts? Yeah. yeah. Every time Fred's wife would find a hairpin or a compact in his car, Fred would yell, Don't throw that away. That's part of my collection. <laughs> Fred used to pick them up all over the country. Yeah, I'll bet <laughs> Now, look, dearie, when Mr., uh, Mr., uh, when the new rumor moves in... Hey, what is his name, anyway? Well, I don't remember, though. It's a very attractive name. Here, Dr. Gamble wrote down a piece of paper, so I... Oh, here it is. Al Darling. Al Darling. Hmm. I'll bet he carries his lunch in a knitting bag. <laughs> <laughs> Al Darling. Oh, Mama. Now, don't leap to conclusions, McGee. He probably shaves three times a day. Oh, by the way, I'm glad you mentioned that. Look what I fixed up for him. Never let it be said that I don't cooperate. What is it? My old electric razor. I honed the blades and oiled it and put the gears in different, and it works like a charm. Wait, I'll show you. Where's the wall plug? In the wall. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. 
Listen to this. <laughs> works like a top, don't it? What? I says works like a top, don't it? I can't hear a single word you're saying. What were you saying? I says it. I says it don't work. It's pop. Oh. <laughs> Come on, dearie. If Mr. Darling is coming in at four o'clock, we've got to get busy. Mr. Darling, what a moniker. I'll bet him and I have many the cozy little chit-chat over our crocheting this winter. <laughs> Swapping recipes for fudge and doing each other's nails. <laughs> I warn you, dearie, don't take too much for granted. I'll bet that he... I wonder why Uncle Dennis came home at this hour today. I don't know, but I hope it was insured. You hope what? What was insured? Joe's Tavern. <laughs> Unless Joe's Tavern burned to the ground, Uncle Dennis would never be home at this hour. Now listen, stop it. Uncle Dennis always bends over backwards to be nice to you. Yeah, if that guy ever bent anything but his elbow, he'd be... Oh, 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 oh. No, you're done. No, you're done. Oh, no. Get away from me. Get away. Leave me alone now. Get away. Get away. Uncle Dennis, oh. what's the matter? Oh, you're as white as a bartender's apron. There's a moose in my room. <laughs> a moose. And I've seen elephants and zebras and snakes, but so help me, this is the end. I'll never touch another drop as long as I live. A moose it was, huh? sticking his head through the wall. Here I come in thinking about nothing at all, and there it is, a moose. <laughs> Dennis, are you all right now? Uh, maybe a little drink or something would calm your nerves, Unc. Well, it might have that, McGee. It might have that. I'm dry as a bone. Dry as a bone. Uh, what have you got? Milk or root beer? Uh, no, thanks. Not first <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, sir, there I was, coming home from downtown. Yeah. Been out all day long trying to pick up a couple of bucks. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. Yeah, we know, we know. And we know you, too, Unc. You couldn't pick up a couple of bucks on a half-broke Mustang. Now, McGee, you're wrong. Uncle Dennis was worth a great deal of money at one time, weren't you, Uncle Dennis? Well, right, you are, Makushla. Makushla, I, I mind the time when I could write me check for any amount you want to name. Well, how Not about... Not too much now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was well, just... second thought, I, I don't think I'll write a check at all. At all. I'd like to do a cash business. Mm -hmm. Like I always say, McGee, fella has the chance to pick up a couple of bucks. That's the way. <laughs> Uh, look, Uncle Dennis, oh. we have a new rumor moving in at 4 o'clock. Oh. How would you like to help us move some furniture? Yeah, I can hardly wait to hear the answer to this one. <laughs> the only time Uncle Dennis lifts a finger is to point at an empty glass. You wouldn't say that to my face. I just did say it to your face. Excuse me, I didn't hear it. 
<laughs> well, now, Molly, darling, I'd, I'd be delighted to help you move the stuff. Delighted. And maybe it'd be a chance to take a couple of bucks. <laughs> the thing is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I've seen that room and it's perfect. I wouldn't change a thing. No, sir. Just right the way it is. You leave it just the way it is. <laughs> Isn't he the old flatterer? He's so full of baloney, they ought to put him on lend lease. <laughs> hey, you know what I did for the new rumor? I put one of my favorite books in his room. What book? Tom Swift and his electric rifle. Oh. <laughs> I always say that a guy gets half his education out of good books and literature and reading. <clears throat> I remember one time. Never mind, McGee. We've got to get busy. Now, look, take the rug out of the spare room and put it on the back porch. There's a better one roll up, uh, rolled up on the shelf in the garage. Oh, I see. Hello, folks. Say. What's all this talk about you taking in rumors? Well, it's true, Mr. Wilcox. We had a spare room, and we knew the town is so crowded with war workers, we didn't have the heart not to let somebody have it. Besides, we can use the extra money to buy war bonds. Yeah, we're getting a guy from an airplane plant, Junior. He'll be handy in case we want to build a wing on the house. <laughs> Would you like to see the uh, room we're fixing up, Mr. Wilcox? It's right back here. Well, if I'd known you were in the market for rumors, my brother Paul is in oh, town now. Oh, no, you don't. We don't want no announcer's brothers living here, Wilcox. Bong, bong, bong. Now leap out of bed, kiddies, and do your exercises. <laughs> and Uncle Paul will tell you where there's a nice present hidden behind the piano. <laughs> now, McGee, be quiet a minute. This is the room, Mr. Wilcox. We're not finished fixing it up yet, but I think it'll be all right. All right. It's wonderful. Nice big closet, comfortable-looking bed, easy chair, smoking stand. What's that thing on the closet door? Necktie rack. I made that in manual training when I was in the eighth grade. <laughs> The reason it's so big is on account of what I started out to make was a bookcase. <laughs> Broke a hand off of it and decided to make a piano bench. Legs weren't even, so I cut it down to a tabaret. Then it was a magazine stand and a mailbox and a collar button container and, and a lamp base. <laughs> I split it trying to stick a wire through it, so I made a necktie right <laughs> Holds five or six ties, unless you hang them on the part that's glued together. <laughs> oh, I tell you, he's a great little handyman, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> you just give him a pair of pliers, and he can straighten a wire coat hanger in less than a week. <laughs> Well, I will say, Molly, that whoever gets this room will have a pleasant place to rest in the arms of Morpheus. There'll be none of that stuff in this house, Junior. <laughs> if he wants to entertain... Oh, be it... quiet, McGee. <laughs> Any uh, suggestions, uh, Mr. Wilcox? Marry a suggestion, Molly. In fact, if I was rooming here, I'd never want to go to work. I'd sit on the edge of the bed all day long and admire that beautiful linoleum floor. Yes. <laughs> Folks, if any of you want to sneak out for a quick smoke, here's your chance. <laughs> Mr. Wilcox just got off the Pony Express from Racine, Wisconsin, ready to deliver a brief lecture on Johnson's glow coat. Always underfoot, but never in the way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> Don't let him kid you, Mr. Wilcox. There is glow coat on this linoleum. No, oh, I knew that, Molly. Whenever I see a piece of linoleum that sparkles and glistens like that, I know it's been glow coated. I know linoleum, and I know they haven't made that particular pattern for 16 years. But look at it. No scuffed places, no cracks. That goes for you, too, McGee. No cracks. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, Molly. When this fellow comes home from the factory with his heavy, dirty shoes, you know the floor is protected against scratches and grit by Johnson's glow coat. Ah, to live in a room with the warm, vibrant charm. The handsome, gleaming, spotless luster of a lovely, lovely piece of glow-coated linoleum. <laughs> Ah, lucky war worker. Having his life enriched and renewed with the soul-satisfying, heartwarming beauty spread before him from wall to wall. <laughs> to return home in the gloaming, hungry for another glimpse of the glistening floor. <laughs> Leaving regretfully in the morning with a happy, backward look. Ah, what ecstasy. What rapture. What a talisman against the cares and tribulations. <laughs> An attic. <laughs> Never mind what he says, McGee. He's prejudiced. Prejudiced? Why, that guy's been turned down four times at the blood bank. All they can get out of him is glow coat. 
Look now, the new rumor is due at 4 o'clock, and it's 3 now. Go get that rug out of the garage. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. Now what? Don't tell me you want me to move that dresser again. It's been shoved around so much now its drawers are drooping. <laughs> No, I was just wondering. Huh? He'll need an alarm clock in here. Did you ever get the alarm clock put back together? Sure I did. Works like a charm, too. Well, what I want to know is, does it work like a clock? <laughs> yes, it does. That is, it does if you keep certain things in mind. Such as the fact that I got the hour hand and the minute hand on wrong, so when the <laughs> clock says 3.30, it's really a quarter after six. <laughs> it's not hard to remember if you don't forget. Fine. Does the alarm work? Well, it would if you could wind it. I lost the little gadget off the winding stand, but all you need is a small pair of pliers and... Oh, see, who's at the door, yeah. Jerry? I want to change the pillow slip on the bed. Oh, don't worry about the pillow slip. Tuck the part that says Pullman underneath McGee. the... McGee! <laughs> Answer the door. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Nobody ever went in this much trouble for me when I was living in the room in houses. They always put me in a hall closet that looked like the engine room on a Greek cattle boat. If I ever hope to... Oh, hold your horses, hold your horses. I'm coming. Dead rat to dead... Hi, mister. Oh, it's you. Mm-hmm. Sis, you got a gift for barging in here at inconvenient times. You realize that? Sure. You do? Hmm? I says you do? Do what? Realize that? What? That, that you got a gift? Gee, have I, mister? What is it? What is it? <laughs> oh, you're wonderful, mister. I never told anybody this was my birthday. I like you. <laughs> Why? Well... You're always so nice to little children. Always giving them gifts and stuff. <laughs> what you going to give me, mister? What you going to give me? Oh, well, uh, well, I, uh, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I, I didn't know what you wanted, sis, so I, well, I thought I'd let you buy yourself one. Um... Here, here's a dollar. Go get a mama doll. And if you're smart, you'll get one that doesn't want to take in rumors. Mm. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, mister. Oh, no, forget it. Forget it, sis. Now, now, just go away and be happy. <laughs> go away and we'll both be happy. <laughs> I'm busy today now, I'm scrape. Oh, what you doing, mister? I'm hmm. fixing up the spare bedroom. We're taking in a rumor. Oh. My daddy doesn't believe in rumors, mister. He says it's silly to listen to him. <laughs> That's another kind of rumor, sis. That's R U M E R. It means stop. <laughs> That's what my daddy meant. Well, the kind I'm talking about is the kind that you rent a room to. That's what my daddy meant. You... Well, make up your mind. Which kind are you talking about? Well, both, I betcha. Huh? We got a rumor staying at our house, and for three weeks he's been telling my daddy he'll pay his rent tomorrow, and that's why my daddy says it's silly to listen to rumors. <laughs> oh, I see. Hmm? I said I see. Now, now run along. Sis. Okay, mister. And she thanks ever so much for the dollar. Uh, you deserve it, sis. You've been a good kid. Any little girl who has a birthday and doesn't tell anybody is for me. You didn't tell anybody this was your birthday? No, sir, not a soul. It wouldn't have been nice. Hmm? On account of my birthday's in April. Goodbye, my friend. <laughs> You let me think this is her birthday. She stuffed me for a dollar. Where's my hat? I'll show her she can't. Where's my hat? Kid her age, taking advantage of... Where's my hat? Oh, here it is in the closet. Oh. <laughs> 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 Forgot to put all that stuff out of the spare room in that closet. <laughs> The King's men sing the best of all. With all those foreign service ribbons on his chest, we had to ask about his travels far and wide. And when we asked about the girls he liked the best, nonchalantly he replied, There was Louise that I squeezed in Tunisia. There was a skirt in dessert he made me fall. There was a miss that I kissed up in Kiska. And a tiger lady in Bengal. I love the pale little frail in Australia. I love the classy London lassie on the mall. But wherever I may roam, it's a gal I left back home that I love best of all. In Honolulu, I hool at the Beulah. Beneath the palms in my arms, she couldn't stall. There was a doll of a mall out in Holland, and I kissed her on the South Sea wall. There, there was Rhea in Pantelleria. I loved the lush little Russian fireball. 
But wherever I may roam, it's the gal I left back home that I love best of all. And there was Nellie, the belle of New Delhi, another maid who obeyed my beck and call. Then there was Bess I caressed in Odessa, a made me think of someone in St. Paul. I went insane over Jane in Tasmania, there was a score, maybe more I didn't crawl. But I'll never roam again if I can get back home again. Ooh, the girl I love the best. Oh. If I do say so myself, I shouldn't, but do, because it really does. <laughs> well, I only hope we don't get some mug living here that's thoughtless and inconsiderate. You know, one of those guys that squawks every time somebody borrows a shirt or a razor blade. <laughs> hey, what's this guy's name again? Petey Sweetheart or Charlie Cutie Pie? No. Al Darling. Oh, yeah. Al Darling. And a very tough customer, too, McGee. How do you know? You never saw him. Well, I didn't have to. Any boy by the name of Darling who got out of grade school alive would have to be tough. <laughs> well, you know, I knew a lad... Uh-uh, that must be him now. Stop smiling, Molly, and get a nasty look on your face, if possible. You don't look like a rooming house landlady. Well, thanks for the if possible. Come in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Just here for a day, I thought I'd drop in. Well, I'll be high, La Trivia. We thought it was our new rumor, Mr. Latrivia. Rumor? Since when have you been taking in rumors, McGee? Since in about ten minutes, if he's on time, Latrivia. <laughs> war worker. Molly's idea. Yeah. You see, we had a spare room, and I got to thinking about the war workers with children who didn't have a proper place to live, so I thought if we made room for a single man, maybe a family could move in where he was, you see. Ah, uh, Molly, you're a fine woman. I'm a fine man, too. <laughs> I hardly argued about it at all. By the way, Mr. Latrivia, uh, look, uh, do I call you Mr. or what? What does one call a Coast Guardsman? Well, if it's a good-looking Coast Guardsman like Latrivia and you're a girl, you don't call him. You just whistle like this. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your very sensible question, Mrs. McGee, which preceded the witty, if somewhat hackneyed, comment of our parlor comic... <laughs> one addresses a Coast Guardsman by his name, unless he's an officer. Well, I tell you, you ought to be an officer, a man with your education. I'll say. It's a shame. A guy that graduated with the highest honors from Barber College. I didn't graduate from Barber College. Well, how far did you get, Mr. Latrivia? I tell you, I didn't go to Barber College. Too expensive? Yes. Uh, no! I don't know. I tell you, I never had the slightest intention of going to Barber College. I went to Yale. They teach barbering at Yale? <laughs> of course not. Well, then why'd you go there if you wanted to be a barber? I tell you, I didn't want to be a barber. I had nothing to do with barbers. I shaved myself. From the looks of that haircut, you must cut your own hair, too. <laughs> I do not. The Coast Guard barber cuts my hair. Why, of course, McGee. You've heard of Coast Guard cutters? <laughs> Of course, I just didn't... A Coast Guard cutter is a ship. A fast, seagoing vessel. Well, no wonder your hair is all chopped up. <laughs> How can anybody give a decent haircut on a speedboat? <laughs> Probably run it back and forth. Please, McGee! <laughs> Mrs. McGee, listen. A Coast Guard cutter has nothing whatever to do with my haircut. It is merely a vessel used in various patrol services by the Coast Guard. Is that clear? Why, of course it is. We understand that. Yeah. The part I don't get clear is, if you're a graduate from a barber college, why you didn't get a commission? It seems to me that a college graduate... I tell you, I didn't graduate. I didn't go to barber college. I never mentioned the idea to you. You started the whole thing when you... You deliberately inveigled me into this... <laughs> McGee. What's the matter, chum? I'm sorry I lost my temper. Ah, heavenly days. Forget it. I'll try not to let it happen again. Ah, uh, don't give it a thought, Patricia. Thank you. But if it 
your carpenter. You run it up for your own. Because I'll tear the pinnacle right out of your bulkhead and blemish your keels and till your bilge is flush with your fiddly. Good day! <laughs> What did he say? He said, uh, fiddly, diddly. Mm. <laughs> After the war, he ought to open up a barbecue joint. He's always good for a few ribs. You know, we shouldn't do that, Steve. He's a fine man and a credit to the Coast Guard. See, our rumor ought to be here any minute yep. now. I wonder if I've forgotten anything in his room. Well, if you did, and I know rumors, and I ought to because I've been one, he'll remind you. Let me see now. Extra blankets, flashlight for blackouts, ashtrays, pants hangers. No, I guess not. Oh, this must be him. Come in. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Gamble. Come in, doctor. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Uh, hi, Doc, old man. Hey, where's our new rumor you were going to send over? What do you mean, send? This is a personally conducted introduction. Huh? Al will be here in just a minute. Oh. Gone back to the car for a handbag. You sure you want to take in a war worker, Mrs. McGee? Oh, of course we do, doctor. We don't. I sure have wasted a day. If I have to do any more shoving furniture around, I'm going to get a shoemaker to put casters on my heels. <laughs> oh, how you suffer, my boy. <laughs> But just try and remember that it won't hurt you. It'll do you good. Your muscles have less tone than a dime store harmonica. <laughs> well, I hope the room will be satisfactory, Doctor. Well, of course it will. Anyway, Al's not fussy. Father was an old school chum of mine. I've known the kid all my life. Ah, here we are. Come on in, Al. Mrs. McGee, Mr. McGee, this is Al Darling. Alice, this is Fibber McGee and Molly. How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you do, I'm sure. <laughs> Hi, sis, and I'm not so sure. <laughs> You're not so sure of what, McGee? Oh, after anything, after this, a uh, pant. Oh, Al, darling. Alice, a uh, girl, I never had... Stop staring, McGee. Huh? Now you come right in, Alice, dear, and make yourself perfectly at home. Say, tell me, can you make fudge? Fudge? Why, why, yes, Mrs. McGee, I make very good fudge. Why? Well, isn't that nice? You know, my husband was saying just a while ago that he hoped to spend many a long winter evening with you swapping recipes for fudge. <laughs> <laughs> I never don't touch it. Oh, my gosh. I did, too. <laughs> You know, when you can make something last twice as long by taking care of it, you usually figure it's well worth the effort, especially in these times. But when it lasts six to ten times longer, that's almost a miracle, isn't it? Well, that's exactly what happens when you protect your linoleum regularly with Johnson's Blow Coat. And what makes the story seem even harder to believe, you actually save yourself work in the bargain. Glow Coat is self-polishing. It needs no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let it dry 20 minutes. Glow Coat makes all linoleum surfaces shine with beauty. Keeps their colors fresh and bright. If you have any floors of asphalt tile or rubber tile, be sure to protect them also with this easy-to-use, ever-more-popular Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat. Say, McGee, look at this article I clipped out of the paper. No, you read it. I can't see a thing with these glasses on. Well, you would fit yourself at the ten-cent store. The article says, We hail with delight the return to the air this fall of our favorite radio team. Their delightful humor is so typically American, so happily their own, and so warmly human, that we expect them to make radio history in the future as they have in the past. (laughs) Yeah, it's swell, isn't it? (laughs) Remind me to send the guy an autographed picture and And it goes on to say, Hmm? We refer, of course, to Amos and Andy, who return to NBC Friday night. (laughs) Good luck, boys. Oh. Yeah. Good night. Good night, all. Thank you for home and industry. Inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Chicago, WMAQ.